Hi, welcome to my aspiring physics students. Uh, I just realized that, you know, without a basic knowledge of mathematics, the learning of physics becomes really tough. So I have set out to produce some videos that give the basic math that you would need to study physics. This is part one and I'm talking about trigonometry here and I hope you listen to this carefully and understand it. When you consider a right angle triangle with the angle theta as shown and the triangle is ABC of course it's right angle that B sine theta is defined as the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse now because the angle is here the opposite side is AB and the hypotenuse is the biggest side therefore sine theta is going to be AB divided by AC AB divided by AC sine theta is opposite side divided by hypotenuse now cos theta is defined as the adjacent side now since the angle is here this is the adjacent side so cos theta is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse okay so the adjacent side is BC and the hypotenuse is AC so it's going to be BC by AC now let's assume that the sides of the triangle are 3 4 and 5 now from sine theta is equal to AB by AC definitely we get AB is equal to AC times sine theta because the AC goes to the other side and goes to the numerator. Similarly, from the other one, BC is AC times cos theta. Tan theta is defined as the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side which would be AB divided by BC remember that while sine theta and cos theta cannot be more than one tan theta could be more than one okay so let's do an example Consider a right angle triangle again and let the angle be 60 degrees. The triangle is ABC and let the hypotenuse be 8 centimeters. And we got to find the sides AB and BC. How can we use the trig ratios for that? Okay, sine 60, remember, is opposite side by by hypotenuse so it's AB by AC therefore AB would be AC times sine 60 and uh, AC is 8 centimeters so sine 60 degrees from your calculator should give 0 0.8660 make sure that your calculators are set on degrees and not on radians so when you get that number and when you multiply we get 6.928 centimeter so that's AB now to find BC what do you do take cos why because BC is the adjacent side so when you take cos theta which is cos 60 degrees you get BC by AC and therefore BC is AC times cos 60 
ace is 8, so that will be ace 8 times 0 0.5000 from your calculator, which gives 4.000 centimeters. Now, what is tan theta? It is opposite divided by adjacent. So that's AB divided by BC. So since we know AB and BC, divide the two and you get 1.732 centimeters. Okay, supposed to be centimeters there. Centimeters. And now let's do another kind of a problem that is going to be used in physics most of the time. This is where you have a vector quantity. Uh, that means basically you have the hypotenuse given and the angle and you have to find the two sides. You have to find the opposite side and the adjacent side. All right. Let the hypotenuse represent a velocity which is 20 meter per second. So it, its magnitude is 20. And therefore, and let the angle be 30 degrees. Uh, we have to find the two sides, AC and BC. AC is the X component and BC is the Y component. Why? Because AC is along the X axis and CB or BC is along the Y axis. Now this is something that you got to do all the time in physics. And so you got to be an expert in this. How do we find AC and BC? Okay, if you take BC by AB, what do you get? BC by AB. BC is the opposite side. AB is the hypotenuse. So you're going to get sine theta. Yes, so BC by AB is sine 30 degrees. Therefore, BC is AB times sine 30. AB is 20. So 20 times sine 30 from your calculator is 0 0.5. And on multiplication, you get 10 meter per second. Okay. Let's put that down there. 10 meter per second. Now, how do we find AC? Yes, you're right. By taking cos 30, because AC is the adjacent side. Therefore, AC by AB is equal to cos 30 degrees, and AC is AB times cos 30. AB is 20, cos 30 is 0 0.8660. On multiplication, you get 17.32 meter per second. So that is how you find the components of a vector along the x and the y axis. So make sure that you understand this because you're going to use this, I don't know, many times in physics. In fact, throughout the physics course, you're going to use this concept. Thank you. Good luck. If you like this, share it, subscribe to this channel.